Hey folks, how are you doing? Suk here from Zen Rigs. So listen, I've just recorded this video, um, which is all about my thoughts of the um, the MF10 um, FR FR speakers that are being distributed by G66 uh, in Europe versus the Atomic CLR um, FR FR monitor as well, which I've which I've been using for years. And having just recorded it, I realised it's actually a really long video. So a couple of things I wanted to to get out of the way at the front. First thing, just to be clear, I'm not affiliated with G66 at all. They're not paying me for this. I'm not affiliated with uh, Atomic. Um, I use Fractal Audio gear, so I use an Axe FX3, I use an FM3. I'm not affiliated with them. I'm completely independent, and this is my honest opinion, having had both sets of speakers, the CLRs and the MF10s here, um, to, to play with for some time. Next thing I'd say is do me a favor, please. It would make a huge difference to me if you would uh, subscribe to my channel, like this video, click on the bell wherever this thing is over here, um, just so you get notified of, of any new cool content that I might be putting up. Um, it would be a huge help to me. And the third thing I'd say is because this video is so long, uh, there'll be some uh, kind of little uh, index thingies down here in the uh, in the description somewhere, which will take you to the relevant part of the video if you just want to skip to the bits that you want to see. Anyway, I've tried to be as uh, as thorough as I can with it. I've given you all my thoughts on everything from FRFR and translating tones and all kinds of crazy stuff. So I hope you find it useful. Um, I hope you find it uh, fun and informative, um, and I'll hopefully speak to you soon. Uh, so today I'm going to talk to you about my experience of using a pair of really cool new FR FR speakers, uh, which are the G66 edition MF10 FR FR speakers um, that are distributed by G66 in the UK uh, and uh, made by a company called Red Sound. So the reason I wanted to do this uh, this this review um, was a lot of people have been asking about how these things sound compared to other monitors, uh, other FR FR solutions, particularly the the Atomic CLR. And for those of you that have followed me over uh, over the years, you know I've been a, a, a big advocate and user of the Atomic CLRs. Um, I've had them for over seven, eight years now, I think, and absolutely love them. They've been flawless uh, in the way they work, pristine sounds, really clear, really loud. Uh, and I've been through the Mark I, uh, the Neo Mark IIs, and they're just brilliant, absolutely brilliant speakers. So uh, I love them so much, by the way, that I ended up buying two. So that kind of tells you how much I love those speakers. I thought they were great. So when I heard a little while ago, a lot of people starting to talk online about this, uh, th these these MF10s um, that they'd bought and claiming that they kind of gave them the, the elusive amp in the room sound that every everybody who's got a modeler seems to be chasing. I just had to check them out. Uh, and as luck would have it, um, someone that I know um, asked me as a favor if I could store a pair, the stereo bundle for them for a short while, um, while there was some other stuff going on, uh, and said, look, you're welcome to just use them, try them out, see what you think, which I thought was just great. So I ended up in this unique position um, of being able to try out the MF10s while I had my CLRs, um, which is great because quite often you're trying to remember how things sounded and then you change your FR, FR system and you're trying to kind of figure out, well, does this sound like that? Is this better? I was in a great situation that I had both of them side by side that I can compare. Interestingly, I was right at the end of a process of tracking for my debut album, um, which this is not a shameless plug for but go and check it out. Um, my debut album, which is called Don't Look Back, uh, and I got the, the MF10s right at the end of the, of the process of putting this together. The tones I created for the album um, were working really great, uh, and they have been set up um, for me to work, obviously, with my guitars and um, with my kind of monitoring solution here. And this is something we'll talk about a little bit later on. They were, they were the great, they were, for me, the perfect recording tones for, for my album. Um, and uh, this is a really interesting thing because these things don't always translate brilliantly to live tones. But we'll get on to that as this kind of uh, this this review goes on. Uh, and I'll tell you what my experience was with those. There's a little background to the speakers. Um, G66, as I mentioned, are the European distributors um, of these G66 edition MF10s. They're also the folks who distribute Fractal Audio products in Europe, uh, as well as a whole bunch of other cool stuff. And the speakers themselves are made by a company called Red Sound, a highly regarded Italian company that specialize in all kinds of audio solutions from uh, home and stage use, PA, full range flat response speakers, all kinds of stuff. And Red Sound designed these speakers in conjunction with the very awesome Marco Fanton. Um, I apologize if I've mispronounced that, Marco. And the goal was to create um, a speaker which was um, f great for modeling modeler users, uh, that was inspiring and fun to play, and that gave them more of that kind of a traditional guitar cab experience as opposed to uh, a kind of a, a high-end monitoring solution. So here's what it is. It features a coaxial design with a 10-inch ceramic woofer, uh, and uh, I'm told that they went for a 10-inch 
um, speaker as opposed to a 12 inch one that's used on most FRFRs because they found that they introduced too much low and high frequency content, which you don't find with traditional guitar cabs. They come as a single active cabinet or as a stereo bundle with a passive cab, which is driven by the active unit. Uh, the weight, um, it's 11.8 kilograms for the active cab and 11K for the passive cab. And what I would say, what that translates to, numbers are great. Is it is it heavy? So there you go. I mean, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go around playing catch with it or anything. But these are super easy to to, to lug around. Uh, they're a great size. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and uh, very easy to lift. In terms of power, um, 300 watts RMS is what it's rated as for nominal power. Uh, not phenomenal power. I should speak a little slower. For nominal power, uh, 600 watts maximum power. The finish is a really great, um, tough, black scratch-proof finish, they say. Uh, the, the, um, the cloth grill is nice and taut and held on with Velcro, which can be removed uh, if, if that's something you want to do, if you want to either expose the speaker or maybe change the grills out, which I know is something that some people have spoken about. In terms of size, um, it's a really nice little size, 38 by 38 by 34 centimeters. You can see there's a slight incline to the front panel. So it's angled upwards a little bit um, to obviously get the sound away from just hitting you in the shins, but not obviously as much as a, a regular stage monitor would be angled. Okay, well, that's great. That's all the specs. But what's really important is how does it sound? Well, I'm just going to start off by saying this is not going to be a video of me sitting here showcasing my chops uh, and playing this for you to show you how it sounds for a couple of reasons. The first more important reason, I think, is that people have already done that. So if you want to go and have a listen to um, these speakers mic'd up really, really well um, in a room to give you a kind of a good impression of how they sound. Uh, Marco Fanton, absolutely brilliant. Uh, and uh, Frank Stefan Mueller, also absolutely brilliant, have both done videos on this, which you can find on the G66 website. There's a link here somewhere you can go check it out, but I'm sure you know where G66 are. So what I'm going to do is give you my honest opinion on them. And as I say, I was in quite a unique situation that I had these and the CLRs at the same time, um, and I could really crank them with my setup. As I mentioned, I'm a huge CLR fan. I've used them for hundreds of gigs over the years, and they've been completely flawless. Um, love the sound of them. But one thing I realized when I got my CLRs, funnily enough, uh, and I came from an RCF monitor setup at the time, which was also absolutely brilliant, um, was that you had this thing, FRFR, -FR, right? F uh, full response, full frequency, or FRFR, full response. Hey, look, they're meant to be flat. That's the whole point, right? Full, full range, full range, flat response. Maybe the other way around. I knew it was something like that. The whole idea behind these is they're meant to be flat in terms of they're not hyping any frequencies and they give you all the frequencies that are pos that are possible. Now, what I found when I went from the RCFs to the CLRs was that wasn't really quite true. And I've actually found this since using other monitors um, when I've gone to venues um, for, for friends of mine and people that I've kind of played around with before in terms of playing with their setups. FRFR is a weird thing. Um, and the thing which I really found, the important thing, is that you have to tweak your presets. You can't take something which I think sounds perfect on one speaker solution, um, supposedly FRFR, then take it to somewhere else and expect it to be identical. You have to create your presets for the monitoring solution that you're using. And this is just as equally, this is equally as, uh, as appropriate for the CLRs as it is for the MF10s. So how do they compare? Well, the first thing I did was I took, I fired up um, one of my go-to patches, which is a morphing patch on my Fractal Audio FM3. Um, and I was using this for the recording of, uh, for, for the recording of some of the songs on my album. I played it through my CLR, um, which of course sounded great. Uh, I then took exactly the same setup. I just didn't change anything with the with the preset at all. Changed the cables around, stuck them into the MF10, uh, and instantly um, it sounded darker. That's the first thing I would say. It sounded darker to me. Um, and I thought, well, what's going on here? That, that's quite a difference. Um, and after playing for a little while, it sounded good. Don't get me wrong. It sounded pretty good, but just dark. Uh, and I thought, all right, well, something's not quite right here. It then occurred to me that my, my CLR was in wedge position. So I've got the sound coming straight at my face, right? If I'm standing in front of it or in my ear, it's normally to the side of me here, straight up to my ear. But the MF10s, and uh, just to be clear here again, I've got the stereo bundle here that I was playing with, but I was testing them out in mono and stereo. Uh, the MF10s are obviously at a different angle and the sound's going lower to, towards your legs and maybe a little bit up. Um, so I took the CLR, I put it on end into kind of uh, the backline position and I tried it from there and instantly they sounded more in the ballpark with each other. Totally different tonally different, don't get me wrong, not totally different, tonally different. Um, and I still found the MF tends to be a little, a little bit darker than the CLR, but they were kind of in the same ballpark. 
So the next thing I did was I turned it up. <laughs> I turned the volume up on the CLR and the MF10s um, and all of a sudden everything just changed. Um, now I knew how the CLR was going to sound. Obviously I've had them for years and having gigged it hundreds of times. But there's a real surprise for me here was the MF10. Um, and it sounded, in, in a word, it just sounded massive. And you've got to remember, I've got the CLR here at the time, which still sounds fantastic, still sounded great. But there was a different experience with using the MF10 to the CLR. Now, people always talk about um, the amp in the room sound. And I'm trying to remember what one of those sounds like, because I've not had an amp in a cab uh, since... 2009, 2010, I think, when I went to Vrattel. So I remember kind of the feel of, feel of it, of course, um, but whether it sounds exactly like that, I don't know. I really don't know. It just sounded big and it sounded me, it reminded me of how it used to feel having a, a, a big cab behind me. So after that kind of initial uh, impression, um, from, from using the MF10s at a little bit of volume, I thought I'd try it compared to the CLR with some of my recording tones. Now, as I've mentioned before, I found that having something which is brilliant for live use through the CLR or whatever isn't necessarily exactly the right tone for recording. So I'd taken one of my morphing presets, which I'd modified for, for the recording of, of, of Don't Look Back, um, and I've got my studio monitors here, which it sounds great through, and obviously when it's recorded, it sounds like that, which is the whole point. Um, I took that same preset, which didn't sound brilliant on the CLR, I'll be honest with you. On the CLR, it sounded a little less gainy uh, and darker, um, but on the studio monitors and recorded great. I tried that with the MF10, and again, I was actually really surprised here because it sounded incredibly close to how it sounds to me recorded. And this was a little bit of a surprise. It was very unexpected. Still sounded a bit dark, if I'm honest with you. Um, but what I did was on, and I used to do this with the CLR as well, on the output that I'm using from my Axe FX to go to the monitor, to the CLR or the MF10, I always put a little bit of EQ on there just to compensate. So for the CLR, for example, I would take out some highs and some bass because oops, because it sounded too, uh, it, it, there was too much of that going on. For the MF10s, I found it to be a little bit dark. So I put in a little bit of uh, high frequency and a little bit MIDI for me. So I took a little bit of the mids out. This is a really easy thing to do. We've got all this power with modelers these days and um, I'm doing this all the time, particularly when I go to venues and maybe the stage is a little bit um, boomy for me or, or whatever. It's an easy tweak to make. So having just corrected, corrected is the wrong word, having adjusted that EQ uh, on the output to the MF10, um, I tried again and it sounded absolutely brilliant. It sounded really, really close to me to how it sounds on my recordings. Now, obviously it's still not the same because you know when you're recording something, the tone that you're listening to, um, the, the sounds you're getting from monitors, which are near field monitors, it's coming straight at your face, it's coming straight at your ears. This obviously is down on the floor there. Um, so it's gonna sound a little bit darker, it's gonna sound a little heavier, but it sounded very, very similar, more so to me than my CLRs, which I thought was fantastic. So I'm not quite sure how to explain, how to demonstrate this to you. Um, the, the best way I think I can do it is to actually play you a clip. Now, this is going to seem like it's a shameless plug. Trust me, this is not a shameless plug. I was working on a truck, a track at the time, um, which is called Get Up. Um, and it's it's a really, um, it's quite a, it's got a lot of stuff going on in this track. It's got some really kind of delicate, clean stuff um, with nice jangly effects. It's got an absolutely crushing rhythm tone um, on a heavily detuned guitar and it's got a really nice singing lead tone. So when I play this, that that patch, that preset that I created specifically for that song, that modified version of the preset, one of my morphing presets, and I know how it sounds because I was recording obviously with it, um, and then I tried it with the, um, the MF10s, it sounded very, very close. And I think this is the best way I can explain to you um, how it sounds. So listen, have a listen to this. This is how, to me, the MF10 sounds in the room here. Uh, and I, I'll see what's going on. I might give this preset away um, at some point, somewhere. Let me have a think about that one. But anyway, have a listen to this in the meantime.
do you think? Um, sounds pretty amazing to me. And this is the thing, the tone is there. Um, it's there in spades. You've got tons of thump out of this tiny speaker, which is just, it's weird um, to expect that much noise out of such a small speaker, but it just sounds huge. Um, and at gig volume, which of course I've tried it at now, I've turned it up here. My neighbor's not too keen, but eh, couldn't hear them anyway. So at gig volume, it just bloomed. Um, tons of controllable feedback. The speakers themselves, super quiet. You don't really hear them um, when they're idling, um, but they just sound really, really great. And it's it's, uh, it's uh, talking again about, does this give you the amp in the room um, feel? Again, I can't remember because it's been 10 years, 11 years since I've done that, but I've kind of got a memory of how it felt having a, a cranked, amp and a 4x12 breathing heavily down my neck and this felt like that. Now I've been talking about this running in mono at the moment with just the one, um, the, the active speaker. Obviously I've got both of them here, like as I mentioned the stereo bundle, um, and I hooked the two of them up, the two speakers together, uh, and it's just massive. It sounds humongous. Now for those of you who haven't tried stereo setups before, it's not uh, it's not essential. It really isn't. And I've I've not really gone stereo for a long time. Even with the CLRs I had two, but one was a backup to the other one. Um, but playing these in stereo is absolutely glorious. Having stereo effects sounds fantastic. Whether it's for live use, whether I'd actually use it, I don't think I probably would um, because I've got mono sound going out to the front of house and I would really just need something I can hear myself with and for my bandmates um, to be able to hear me and for me to get feedback. So I think I'd probably play with a mono one um, when I'm gigging, but at home, stereo, absolutely amazing. So the MF10s, uh, in summary, um, are they at, well, let me give you, let, let's talk about some of the things that people always ask about. Okay, so here's my top, um, let's say, well, let's have top six, six questions. It might be five, possibly four, um, but the top, the top few things that people are always talking about, right? So firstly, is it accurate? Honestly, I've got no freaking clue. Uh, and I don't actually care. Um, how do I know what accurate is? The, the CLRs are super accurate on paper. The RCF and uh, RCF, NS10, I think NS10s they were called, SMAs, they were meant to be flat response. Uh, flat response, full response, flat, and uh, full, 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 that up. full response, flat frequency, whatever it is. Anyway, um, they're both supposed to be FR, FR, um, but they sounded different. So is it is it is it completely accurate? I've got no clue. Um, it doesn't matter. All right, second thing. Does it sound like an amp in the room? Uh, this is the elusive prize that everyone seems to be chasing with modelers. Um, and honestly, as I say, it's been so long, I couldn't tell you. The only thing I can tell you is that it sounds massive and it reminds me of what it felt like to have a cab behind me. The thump you get from this thing, um, it'll, 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 it'll cause an involuntary bowel movement if you want it to. Uh, it's really, really great sounding. Um, what more can I say? Next, is it loud enough? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. It's amazing how much volume and air this little thing is pushing out. Uh, like I say, I'm using two speakers together now, but even one on its own is super loud and it will definitely cause pants to flap, uh, bowels to move, fillings to rattle and all that kind of stuff. Probably for me, um, this is one of the interesting ones. So do the presets translate well to front of house because of accuracy and that kind of thing? I would just add to that though, however, I think it's going to translate great for the purely from the perspective of, I know how well it's translated to my studio monitors uh, and obviously for my recording. So if that's what's happening when it goes out there, um, I know I'm sending a signal to my front of house guy, which is not too far off of being right. Uh, and he won't have to tweak uh, he or she. Well, in our case, it's a he definitely, but I'm, I'm trying to be PC here. Um, whether your sound guy is a he or she, um, they won't have to tweak it to death. Next question, which is probably actually more important, I think, um, is it fun to play? All I can tell you is that uh, from over 20 years of gigging, um, I found that what you've really got to do is enjoy yourself when you're playing. And if you enjoy yourself, it's going to come across in your playing. It's going to come across in, uh, it's going to come across to the audience. It's going to go across to the band. If you're having fun and you've got a tone that's inspiring uh, and is making you play well, surely that's the goal, right? And this is the thing. I think in all the time I've been playing uh, tube amps, and I've had all kinds in my 32 years of playing uh, and modeling, particularly um, for the past 11 years, modeling amps when I've, I've been using uh, fractal audio um, 
Axe FX since, like I said, 2009, 2010. I've had atomic amplifiers uh, and boxes and all kinds of things. Without exception, I've now got the most enjoyable tone that I've ever had to play, the most enjoyable speaker sound up that I've ever had to play. And I think this is really important to me. Um, it sounds great at low volume. It sounds better at, at when it's turned up a little bit because it just seems to respond in the way that you'd expect a cab to just thump you. Uh, and it sounds full and it's just an awful lot of fun. So yeah, it is a, it's a hell of a lot of fun to play. So the final question, I guess, which everyone's thinking is, is it better than the CLR? Um, well, let me answer this in two ways. Better, better is surely is subjective. It depends on what you want. It's different. It's different to the CLR. There's no two ways about it. Um, the CLR as a wedge monitor, which is what I used to use it for, uh, of course, on stage, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, and I think if I wanted a proper wedge monitor now, I'd stick with the CLR. There's no two ways about it. Absolutely no question. I still think it's fantastic. But I'm at a place now, I think, where what I want is just to be able to enjoy what I'm hearing and something that inspires me to want to play and makes my pants flap. Um, and it's all about enjoying my tone right now because I know that makes me play better. Um, for the MF10s, I find that they give me that experience. They give me more of a cab-like experience uh, and it just feels like an awful lot of fun. And as I said, in terms of the, 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 the tone that I'm getting in the room, uh, now and out of my monitors, which obviously is like I say, they translate pretty well. It, it's great. It's absolutely fun. Um, so I guess the second part of the question is, well, if it's that good uh, and I'm saying, well, you know, CLRs are equally good, but different, then what do I really think? Well, let me put it this way. I've sold both of my CLRs and I've now bought the stereo pair MF10s, taking nothing away from the CLRs again. I think that for a wedge format monitor, they're just brilliant. But for me right now, for what I want to do, which is play guitar and have an awful lot of fun with something that just thumps in the room, the MF10s is where it's at, uh, and I'm absolutely loving them. And the final thing I'd say is this is just my opinion, right? And um, everybody's ears are different. Everybody's guitars are different. Uh, and you've got to bear in mind, right? You get, if you're going to get this or you're going to get CLRs, or you're going to get whatever you're going to get, you have to tweak your presets. I think it's nuts that people will have presets perfectly set up for whatever monitor they've got, try another monitor with exactly the same presets and say, well, this sounds like crap and then get rid of the, the you know, the, keep stick with their old monitors. If you're going to try something new out, I'd say, yep, absolutely plug in your current presets, but you have to tweak. You've got to create a preset specifically for that monitor um, because not all FR, FRs are equal. So check out the videos by um, uh, Marco and by Frank, um, Stefan Mueller, and um, go and have it. It'll give you a great idea of how these things sound because both of them have done a great job of kind of placing mics in the room um, to show you how these things sound. Fantastic videos available on G66. Um, but the best way to get an understanding of how these sound is try them out. And fortunately, the guys at G66, are they, they give you no reason. They give you every reason to try them out. I was going to say no reason to not try them out. That's the wrong word. They give you every reason to try them out. They've got a fantastic 30 day no quibble return um, uh, offer. Try them out in your own in your own environment. Try them with your gear. Um, give them a good thumping at home. And if they're not for, not if they're not for you, just send them back um, and they'll refund you in full. I think minus postage. I'm not sure, um, but I would strongly recommend giving these a try. Now, having said all of this, um, I have to be absolutely clear with you. I'm not affiliated with G66. I'm not being paid for this. I'm not affiliated with Red Sound uh, or Atomic. Uh, I'm just a guitar player um, who, who's like you, who wants to get a great sound in the room. So this is my honest opinion of, of how these things sound. So there you have it. Uh, the G66 edition MF10 uh, FR, FR speakers. They're solid, they're light, they're portable. They're an absolute blast to play, uh, and I highly recommend them. So head over to g66.com uh, and check them out. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found that useful. It would be a massive help to me if you'd please subscribe to my channel and give this a like. Hit the bell notification wherever that is these days to be notified of, uh, of, of any new stuff that I put up. Um, and um, more gear reviews like this and, and various other things that will be coming along soon. So hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you out there.